ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. When Bill's at bat, the kids all shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, we Hey, Silver. Hey! Ranger and Toto were filling their canteens from a stream that ran through a gully in the Black Hills of Dakota. When the masked man happened to glance up, he saw an Indian about 50 yards away on the crest of the slope, and the Indian was fighting a rifle over the top of a rock. Look out, Toto! He pushed Toto to one side and leaped to the other as the rifle cracked. Give it, Toto! The masked man drew a gun and fired. You hit rifle. In drop it. He's running away. Let's catch him. Uh-huh. Loose gravel made it difficult to ascend the steep side of the ravine. By the time the Lone Ranger and Toto reached the top, where the flat terrain was started by big boulders, the Indian was out of sight. Uh, uh, here. Here the rifle him use. Toto, let me see that rifle. Uh, he never see a rifle like this. It's a bold action Enfield. A repeating rifle made in England. How Indian get rifle like that? I don't know. But we'll try to find out. We'll show this rifle to our friend Colonel Hardwick at Fort Blanchard. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Toto, after showing a military pass, were admitted to post headquarters at Fort Blanchard, where Colonel Hardwick, the commanding officer, welcomed them warmly. After hearing the masked man's story and examining the Enfield rifle, the colonel frowned and said, Frankly, this is the first Enfield I've seen. I don't know how an Indian could have gotten it. This rifle must have come from Canada. Do you think Canadian gun runners are dealing with the Sioux? I doubt it. Indians have no money. Oh, I thought the tribe received money from the government. That's true. The treaty specifies that the yearly payment is made in gold. Yeah. Each member of the tribe gets a share of it. But the Indians have no money now. They spent what they received a year ago. Oh? The annual payment is due today. It's here in the fort. I uh, plan to send it to Mr. Vale this afternoon. Mr. Vale? Yes, Oscar Vale. He's in charge of the Indian agency on the reservation. Gee. Perhaps he could tell you how an Indian got an Enfield rifle. Well, Toto and I will call him and take the rifle with us. Your, uh, your mask may cause trouble. I'll go disguised. Huh? Between Fort Blanchard and the reservation, the masked man and Toto stopped in a woods, where the Lone Ranger removed his mask and riding clothes and disguised himself as a prospector. <laughs> Two men conferred in the Indian agency less than a mile away. One was Oscar Vale, the agent in charge. The other, a mission-educated Indian named Grey Wolf, who was the sub-chief of the tribe. He said, Vale, my rifle was stolen. What? 
You mean the sample infield those Canadian gun runners gave you when they were here last month? Yes. Running Deer stole it. He was seen leaving the reservation with it. He returned without it. Well, where is the right? Running Deer won't tell. He says he lost it. He's one of the young braves whose great ambition is to kill a white man. He may have done so. Oh, that's bad. Running Deer may have done something to spoil all our plans. Yes. And I thought you should know. It will be on our guard. How soon do you expect the annual payment of gold? The colonel sent word that we'll have it this afternoon. Oh. Old Chief Killbuck may want to distribute it at once. Well, I'll stall him off. We'll need $10,000 of that money to pay for the 200 Enfield rifles and ammunition Pierre and Jacques are bringing from Canada. The sooner we get the rifles, the better. I expect the gun runners will deliver them tonight. Are the Braves lined up for the outbreak? Yes. After the rifles are passed out, they leave the reservation a few at a time and meet us in the woods near Argus City. Are they enthused about raiding the town? Uh, very. While they're shooting the citizens and burning the buildings, you and I should have no trouble cleaning out the banks and the express office. <laughs> it should be easy. With the town in flames and people fighting for their lives, no one's going to fight for the banks. We should collect a million dollars. What about the Indians who do the raiding? What about them? <laughs> Those who are not killed will be captured and hanged. But by that time, you and I will be out of the country with the money. I tell you... Hey, wait a minute. Who's that? A white man who looks like a prospector and a strange Indian just rode up. They're coming to the door. Let him in. Bale's eyes narrowed as the disguised Lone Ranger, followed by Tonto, stepped into the office. Are you the man in charge of this office? Yes, I'm Oscar Vale, the agent. This is my assistant, John Graywolf. What are you doing on the reservation with the rifle and sidearms? That's against the law. It's also against the law for an Indian to try to kill a white man. What do you mean? One of your redskins tried to shoot my partner and me. He dropped his newfangled rifle. Let me see it. Take a look. I never saw a rifle like it. I took out the cartridges. Yeah, you seem to know how to work it. Tell me about the attempt to shoot you. Well, it's afternoon. Speaking in a manner that suited his disguise, the Lone Ranger told his story. Vale and Grey Wolf listened. Then Vale said, Hey, you have a right to complain. We'll make an investigation, but I'm sure the Indian doesn't belong to this tribe. Why are you so sure? It says here, made in England. The Indian who dropped this rifle must be a renegade from Canada. Looks like you don't aim to do much about it. I better take my complaint to the colonel at the fort. Hey, give me that rifle. Now, hold on. You broke the law by carrying arms on a reservation. What? Well, as Indian agent, I have police power. You're under arrest. Arrest? Holding the empty rifle in one hand, Grey Wolf reached for his pistol. But before he could draw it, Tonto gripped his arm. You won't draw a gun, boy, you! Struggling with Tonto, Grey Wolf dropped the rifle. Meanwhile, Vale reached for his weapon. Oh. But the Lone Ranger's gun spoke first. My hands, your hands, all right. Just your gun that's smashed. Now stand back. You'll pay for this. I'll show you. Fix you. Oh. Tonto's blow sent Grey Wolf to the floor. He's got his gun. Now both of you, stay where you are. You took my gun. You find it outside after we go. <laughs> and Toto mounted their horses and dashed away. They rode north for several miles, making sure their trail could not be followed. Oh, 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 oh. Then through rain in a woods where the Lone Ranger said, After I remove this disguise, we'll return to the fort and tell the colonel about the incident. Uh, how we go to fort? We we'll ride east through this woods until we reach the trapper's trail that runs south from Canada. The wagon moved south along the trapper's trail east of the woods. It was drawn by oxen and driven by one of the two swarthy men who sat on the seat. Get up there! Get up. Two saddled horses were tied behind the wagon, which seemed to hold nothing but buffalo hides. The men named Pierre and Jacques were French Canadians who belonged to a colony of smugglers, traders, and trappers across the border. Buying goods from the Hudson's Bay Company, they sold wherever they could make a profit. Jack, we must be near the reservation. We are near it, Pierre. But first the cave. Here we make the turn. Oh, there. Oh. The driver turned the oxen off the trail and guided them into a large cave. Oh, oh, oh. 
You untie the horses while I free the oxen from their yokes and traces. We must ride to the reservation and see how it stands there. If soldiers are nearby, we will have to wait until it is safe to deliver the ride. Pierre and Jacques tied the oxen to the side of the wagon, and a few minutes later rolled out of the cavern. Sometime after the gun runners left the cavern, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode south on the trader's trail. They had noticed the fresh tracks of the heavily loaded ox drawn wagon, and when they reached the place where the wagon left the trail, they followed the tracks of the wagon through a tangle of brushwood. And the last man and Indian soon discovered the cave. They entered cautiously and saw the wagon with the oxen tied to its side. After making sure no one was hiding in the cave, the Lone Ranger said, The man who brought that wagon here rode south. Uh, that's how old tracks look. Let's see what the wagon holds. Uh, uh, looks like buffalo hide. There's something beneath the hides. A wooden case? Several of them. Now, we got hatchets and belts. Maybe open case. Yes, Toto, let's see what's inside. Uh, Using the blade of his hatchet, Toto quickly tried up the top of the nearest case. The Lone Ranger looked inside and exclaimed, Rifles. Toto, these are new Enfield rifles. Sorry. What does this mean? Toto, it looks like the work of gunrunners. Ah. I think these weapons are on the way to the Indians. What we do? Toto, look here. This bolt slides right out of the rifle. Without the bolt, the weapon is useless. Uh Ah. So take the bolts out of all the rifles and hide them. Then we'll nail down the lids of the boxes and cover them with the hides. Open the rest of the boxes while I start removing these bolts. Uh Ah. Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you do it is the question. And here's one that happens that many people have to say. That's the word up north. Just ask the champions. Up north, we know what Wheaties mean to guys like Slug and Harvey Keen. We love to see him belt that ball and make the fielders climb the wall. And Richie Ashburn, yes indeed, he plays baseball at Wheaties speed. Just watch him flash from base to base. This boy could win in any race. Yes, sir, Harvey Keene and Richie Ashburn are longtime Wheaties fans. Both of them know there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties. And darkness closed in, the loaded wagon looked as if it had never been disturbed. But the rifles in the cases beneath the buffalo hides were utterly useless. The Lone Ranger and Tonto hid the bolts in brushwood near the mouth of the cave. Easy, silly, big fellow. Easy, fellow. Then mounted their horses and started south. Oh, 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 oh. Presently, in the moonlight, they saw two horsemen in the distance and drew off the trail. Oh, oh, oh. Concealed in brushwood, they watched the horsemen ride past. They didn't see us, Tonto. Ah, that good. Did you notice how they were dressed? Ah, I'm sure they're French Canadians. You must have them. Tell us who bring rifles from Canada. Yes. We'll wait right here and see if they return with a wagon. In less than an hour, the Lone Ranger and Tonto heard the slow walk of oxen and the creaking of a heavy wagon. Peering through the screen of brushwood, they saw the load of rifles moving south. Get along there. The same men are riding on the wagon. Ah, horses tied behind the wagon. We'll follow at a distance and wait at the boundary of the reservation. Later that night, Oscar Vale unlocked the strong box that the army had delivered to his office. He lifted the lid and removed two canvas sacks, each one filled with gold coins, and placed them on his desk. As he closed the strong box, Jacques and Pierre came from an adjoining room. Ah, my friend, I see you have our money ready. Not so fast, Jacques. But the rifles and ammunition are delivered. 
They are in the other room. Ray Wolf's opening the cases, isn't he? We. Oui. You'll get your money when he says everything's all right. Quiet. There is Gray Wolf. You double crosses. Those rifles are worthless. There are no bolts in them. But you are wrong. You're crazy. You took out the bolts so you could have refused to pay us. That's a lie. You promised us ten thousand dollars, and we want the money. We pay seven thousand for the Hudson Bay Company for the rifles. You promised to pay us, and you will pay. <laughs> Get up your hands, don't you, Jack? Take the gun, we. I am them. Now take the gold, and we go. We leave the oxen and wagon here. Come on, big gray wolf. Wait. You'll not get away. I'll send the agency guard down them. We'll get back that gold. A short time later, Gray Wolf, the crooked sub chief, sent half a dozen armed men in pursuit of Jacques and Pierre. Then entered the office and said, Well, Vale, our plans are spoiled. That's not the worst of it. While you were gone, Chief Kilbuck came here to ask why the money had not been paid. Yes? Did you stall him? I tried to, but he suspects something's wrong. He threatened to go to the colonel as we turned over the money. Ah. We'll have to explain the rifles, the missing money, a lot of things. Now wait. Say we'll take Kilbuck to the colonel. Are you crazy? No. We'll say he bought the rifles and paid for them with the money we gave him to pass out to the tribesmen. We'll say we discovered the rifles. Brought them here and then sent agency guards after the gun runners. That's a good idea. I'll back your story. That'll clear us. With Jacques and Pierre dead, there'll only be the old chief to deny our story. He doesn't understand a word of English. No one's going to believe him. Meanwhile, Pierre and Jacques approached the border of the reservation. <laughs> Suddenly, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode from behind a boulder and into view ahead of the fleeing gun runners. <laughs> the masked man fired a shot of warning. Ready to will shoot you. Get your hands up. The man with the bat. Who are you? What do you want? The answer to some questions. Kimasabi, you hear plenty of horse come this way. Indians? They are after us. They will shoot us. We must get away. That is. Only the Indian guards have guns, and they wouldn't pursue you unless Grey Wolf told them to. He is the one. He sent them. Please, my friend, ride with us. Later we talk. Were Grey Wolf and Vale in on that rifle deal? What, what do you mean, mister? Don't pretend innocence. We know you delivered Enfield rifles to the reservation. Those in the end are closed. We have no time. You can't get away from them. Your horses are spent. You'll be captured long before you reach the border. Uh, we buy your horses with a big price. Where's the money? Uh, in our saddlebag. We have plenty of gold. Gold you got from the Indians? I don't want it. Hey, the Indians are closer. Soon they... There's soon just they... one way for you to save your lives. How? Come with us to Fort Blanchard. But we are gun runners. The soldiers... They, they may be lenient with you if you make full confessions and testify against Vale and Grey Wolf. They betrayed a trust. They turned on their own government. You fellows didn't. Hey, Pierre, the masked man is right. Save our lives. Then we will agree to anything. Bring the saddlebags that hold the gold and ride double with Hunter and me. Without distance, those Indians, then go to the fort. Later that night, in Colonel Hardwick's office, the Lone Ranger quickly related what had happened. Then the gun runners made complete statements that amazed the commandant. They told why the Indian agent and his assistant wanted the Enfield rifles. The colonel said, but What did Vale and Grey Wolf hope to gain by an outbreak? Colonel, I, I make the clean breast. I, I'm a smuggler, yes. A murderer, no. This Jacques and I heard tonight. Well, what did you hear? Vale and Grey Wolf planned to arm the young Sioux and turn them loose on Argus City to kill and burn while they rob the banks. I never heard of a more ruthless plot. I'll send troops to the agency at once to arrest them. But... Yes, you mean. Yes, what is it? Well, Colonel, sir, Mr. Vale, John Gray, Wolf, and Chief Kilbuck are here to see you. Yeah. Well, send them in. Yes. All right. Colonel Hardwick, we... They look standing by the wall. The masked man. Shock and Pierre. We've walked into a trap. I'm getting out of here. Oh, you're not. Get your hands up. You too, Vale. Colonel, what is this? Take their guns, Toto. Ah, uh, me get them. Colonel, I'll report this outrage to Wolf. Hold your tongue, Vale. I'm arresting you and Gray Wolf on charges of misusing government funds and conspiring to incite revolution and commit murder and robbery. Oh, you have it all wrong, Colonel. It was Chief Kilbuck. Oh, you want to blame that good old chief here, crimes, huh? Well, do you no good to lie? You have no proof against us. Pierre and Jacques will testify again. Colonel, why are you allowing a masked man to meddle in this case? Who is he? 
I'm the man who took an Enfield rifle to your agency this morning. Fine. And it was he who took the bolts from the contraband rifles, then saved the lives of the gun runners, and recovered the gold you gave to them. Those gun runners stole the money. Shut up, Bale. They can't prove the gold came from the agency. Yeah, uh, but we can. It's still in the original sex. He said it. Yes. Put Vale and Grey Wolf in hands. Then take them and the two Canadian gun runners to the guardhouse. Yes. It hadn't been for this masked man. You would have betrayed your own people and written a bloody page in the history of crime. Colonel, are you going to seize the rifles as contraband? Yes, of course. And I'll send Tonto back here with a bolt so you can use them. Good. Come on, Tonto. Adios, sir. Goodbye, and thanks again. Wait, that man with the mask, he saved our life. Poison, I do not mind, but death? No, no. Colonel, who is the masked man? You've probably heard of him in the past. And you'll hear of him in the future. He's the Lone Ranger. Recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.